sports back. Sports are like the reward of a functioning society, uh, a, a functional society. So the video I just showed was from Sean Doolittle, who was a former Nationals pitcher and now pitching for the Reds, um, basically saying that sports is a reward of a functioning society. And this is where I feel right now where we at. Um, basically, this is more towards the fans and such. Is that for some fans, I think they want to see sports as an escapism of everything what's going on in the world. They don't want to know about the politics. They don't want to know about anything on this one. They want to have the privilege to ignore that stuff and just focus on sports. The problem is that there's a lot of intersection going on of sports, politics, culture, everything. Even, well, entertainment, if you want to include it that way, but you can't, you can't escape what was outside of it. And I think athletes are now speaking out on that and reminding us what's in the outside role. I will point to this week what happened with the Derek Chauvin child. Of course, all the news uh, networks will cover it. But one network particularly covered this the most is ESPN. Uh, usually, of course, a sports network uh, covering sports, but they went to a special report and covering the trial. And there was a huge discussion. And El Duncan mentioned of the reason why they need to uh, do this because the athletes were focusing on this one, and they and it affected the um, the mindset. And they and they need to know of what's going on to it. And especially uh, during the in May when. When things were starting getting back together of some sort, when because I know it was down the line in July that uh, NHL and the NBA were starting to play, the uh, this happened on Memorial Day. It was happening a month before, and, and it affected all the athletes because we we're all staying home and we all saw it. Yeah, and then you saw the effects of it. That uh, there were a couple of cancellations, especially I know I remember the Philadelphia Washington one last year. Uh, Philadelphia was an intrigue of playing. Washington obliged and the game they didn't play they made up l later down the line last year and then yeah and then la and then uh, a couple weeks ago uh, actually no, it was this past week actually uh, the uh, Minnesota teams uh, postponed the games because of what's going on uh, actually a little different with Devon Wright in Minnesota uh, uh, being killed and also this past week I mean there's a lot of news this week uh, about Super League, uh, about the big teams want to join together to have like meritocracy where no one gets relegated, and then the fans heard that the European fans heard that, and and they went to the streets and told them, no, no, don't do this. This is so stupid, and then almost everyone backed out of it. Almost all the teams backed out of it. Of course, they're gonna do it again, but to the extent they backed out because of the fans, the European fans. And I find this, uh, I kind of discovered, so for, for European fans, European soccer fans, I feel like they feel like their soccer team is the community. They own part of the soccer team. And with these owners buying these teams, they feel like they're, they're neglected to it. And some of that is the American owners and American, Chinese, Saudi Arabia owners. And, and the fans want to have their say to it. And they do because they own that community, and and the, and they open up to the players to it. But it's it's gonna be a huge clash on this one. In America, we basically listen to the owners. So you hear about the the fans backing up the owners uh, from Howard Bryant and Tim Kawakami uh, from the uh, athletic in the San Francisco area are talking about. That fans do back the owners; they don't back the players, and because they want, they want the fans want the owners to save money to be under the salary cap, and and such. They want, of course, they want the uh, the player to be paid, but under a certain budget. And to and that I find it fascinating because I think in America we're used to the salary cap, um, and that we need to save and then we need to find players that will rotate in this one. And also, we have other leaks as well. So, fans don't have the involvedness. With the exception of probably Green Bay Packers fans, because they actually do own the team because of stock market. So, they get stock and are part of the uh, process. Yeah, in Europe, 
you you have basically it's a community of some sort and they care about being the best and there's no salary cap but also there's also you have the big the big rigs you have like the Manchester United Manchester City Chelsea Tottenham uh, Liverpool and also you go to Real Madrid Barcelona Ju Juventus uh, PSG and such these are the big clubs well PSG what, what was it involved in this uh, the uh, Super League, but uh, they're one of the bigger clubs in Europe. America fans, they want the action. They want to see everything because it satisfies themselves. They don't see the bigger picture out there. And I think that's the worrisome of American fans is that there's so many things. They don't care about the bigger picture. For some, they don't care about the bigger picture outside. They just want their own um, basically <laughs> the own privilege to say, hey, I want my game. Give, give me my game. I want to bet. I want to see players play. And that's it. And I don't want to deal with the other stuff because I'm already miserable it is right now. And I think this is why we're going to see a lot of postponements in America because athletes are human. So they see what's going on. And for the most part, it's people of color affecting, being affected by this. White people are not affected. For the most part, are not affected by this because we see a lot of killings with uh, people of color, beings, bullying, sexual harassment, all that stuff. But we don't care. But some fans don't care because they want the action. They want to be satisfied. They just don't want to see what's out there and such beyond sports. Europe, they understand like it's part of the game. Bang now is part of the game, but uh, it's still about community for the most part. But in America, uh, we we basically want satisfaction. Like we want to be part of it because we tell the owner, "Hey, pay this guy, but don't pay this guy," and that gives some satisfaction to it. Uh, they care about these things, and now they're woken up to it and saying, "We need to do something." And I find this fascinating about American fans that they want to see action, but yet if you want the best athletes, if you want to see the best action possible, you want these athletes to be safe. And I think for the most part, they're not. For most of these people, they're not because what they see right now on television with the police shootings and the protest and the other stuff. Yeah, the owners care about that as well, but more of a business sense. But on a human, on a human aspect of it, they just don't care. Uh, they just want the money. And so that's the downside of capitalism because... People want to care about how much they want to put in their pockets instead of what's going out there, and then be part of somewhat a part of a community of some sort. I think that's the concern right now with fandom uh, here in the United States is that we're worried about the micro stuff, but not the macro stuff. The athletes have a lot of power to it, and they will determine what what you want to see or not. And I think that's fine uh, because they are human. And they've been basically been bullied around by others. There was a whole huge conception where fans go to the seats because they're paying these players. Well, no, because TV contracts are paying the players. You're just paying for maintenance for the uh, the workers, the food over there, new machinery. That's basically it. And you say you have a voice to it. I mean, you're paying for it. Sure, you're paying. You're saying you're paying for it in the stadium. Okay, that's one aspect of it. But you're also paying for the TV as well. Because you're paying for the cable. And part of that goes to the uh, networks who are mostly owned by uh, sports teams now these days. Basically, RSS conceptually. So, I mean, you decide. I mean, hey, you said, I'm not going to the stadium again. But you're still watching it. You're still paying them. So, what's your issue? I think... Fans need to realize is that the sports we see is a service. It's a privilege. We see them to it. But if you want the best aspect of sports, help the community out. Help what we're going to do with this police, the killings, um, the crime in your areas, potential crimes, and potential issues arising with your sports teams around your area, especially one with cable networks and, the, uh, and such. So... That's a big issue, but don't, they don't want to tackle to that because that's hard work.
and it should be. They just want to see the game, and that's it. That's privilege. Our right is to help everyone out and to make sure it's a fair and just society. And that's where sports is a reward of a functioning society.